Hello and welcome to another update video. We recently pushed a big release with a lot of features and I wanted to use this video to give you a quick overview of um, what has changed. So let's have a look at our release notes. And as you can see, we called the release Guardians in Space because both Guardians and Space uh, play an important role. So let's have a look at what uh, the Spaces feature um, is actually doing. As you can see with our demo project, the Eldritch Dungeon Master, we have split it up into three different spaces. Um, one for game design documents, one for tasks, and one for knowledge. Spaces are basically just containers for your decks um, without any additional features, like they inherit the um, project settings, uh, both from a, what the user access rights um, entails or um, project tags. Um, as to be expected, you can move your decks around within spaces or um, across the spaces. And um, if you're not interested in seeing certain spaces, you can just collapse them like that to allow you to really focus on the decks that you're most interested in. And one fairly important change that we made is that previously the deck order was based on a per user setting. Uh, we now changed that such that all spaces look the same across the team to ensure that there is um, consistency. So if you feel that the decks that are important to you are not like highly visible to you, uh, it might be a good idea to introduce a new space um, such that you can focus only on that space and um, collapse all the other spaces. As you can see, um, collapsing um, a space um, gives you some additional information to, to know what's hidden behind. There is the number of decks as well as the number of completed cards and uh, the total number of cards um, within that space. To give you an idea of how to manage those spaces, um, let us just quickly add a new space. There's this button over here, um, which allows you to pick from any of our um, default spaces, uh, but you're of course also free to create your own um, custom space with a custom icon, which uh, will be uh, extending in the next couple of releases the, the number of icons, as well as uh, allowing you to pick um, a custom name. I'll just call it my space and add it like that. Uh, and now you're free to either create new decks or move existing decks um, to that space. You're of course free to rename your space and if it's empty, you can remove it. Um, you're also able to change the order of your spaces by using that button. Um, so now I can, for example, push the tasks um, toward um, the top of my project. All right, let's see what else uh, we have in store for you, which are the Guardians. Um, we got some feedback from you, especially from larger teams, that at a certain size it's sometimes difficult to um, make sure that everyone understands the um, approval and review process, that sometimes it happens that cards that shouldn't be marked as done are suddenly marked uh, as done, uh, and that sometimes cards that went through the review process weren't marked uh, as done, and therefore, um, yeah, made it difficult to really ensure that um, the progress is um, recorded um, as it should be. So for that reason, we introduced the Guardian feature. Uh, and let's um, have a look at it by um, going into our code deck. And um, for our code deck, we want to ensure that whenever um, a card is about um, to be reviewed or is about to be marked as done, that it has to go through my eyes, basically. And for that, uh, we can hit the Guardian button and um, set our pointing guardians. In that case, um, I am the guardian of that um, code deck. I save it like this. And to see what this change implies, let us um, change the perspective um, and go through the to the um, to the view of one of my coworkers, um, Tom, uh, and see what um, his cards now look like. So let's open my card in that case, um, assuming I'm Tom. And as you can see. Um, I can't hit the done button uh, because it tells me uh, only guardians may set a card as done. So what am I supposed to do? Well, I am supposed to start a review. And as you can see uh, right away, um, the, all the guardians, in that case me, are already um, automatically added to that review and there's no way for uh, me to remove them. So um, yeah, let's start a review and see uh, what it looks like. Let's check it out. And the review is started with both Tom and um, and me being added. And as you can see, Tom isn't able at the moment to close the review and mark the card as done because uh, it tells him that this button is only available once all guardians approved. So you might be wondering, what is this approval concept? 
Well, for decks, including Guardians, we changed the flow somewhat in that um, previously you had the options of closing a review or opting out. And we found the opting out messaging um, a bit ambiguous and we figured it's probably wiser to make it more explicit what it actually entails to opt out. And we rephrased um, for Guardian decks the opt out process into approve and leave conversation, which basically, yes, um, tells Tom uh, in that little message here that I approved and have left. Um, and with that change, Tom, if we switch back to him, can see, okay, then I approved and left and is now able to close this review and mark the card as done. Let's do that. And you can see it's now green and Tom can get on with his life. Uh, yeah, we're hoping that the Guardian feature will ensure that the review process is used as, uh, as intended because we learned that um, with this um, approval process, there is um, a lot to be gained. And by making sure that everyone goes through that process, we hope that um, yeah, nothing falls through the cracks. Okay, cool. Let's check out our next feature then, which is our card cover image editor. And uh, we certainly have learned that um, a lot of you take a lot of effort in making sure that um, your cards look as uh, pretty as they can be. Uh, and we wanted to give you the tools to make it um, even better. So let's have a look, for example, uh, at this card and uh, what I'm able to do. So as usual, um, any image attached to a card can be set as a cover image. But now if you press this button, you will be met with a couple of options. So one option being that you can um, move um, the cover image around. For example, I want this now to be centered and save it. And as you can see, the card now here is centered. Um, I can also change um, the color mode. So right now it's dark. I can change it to light, which doesn't really look too pretty um, on this cover image. And um, we also introduced um, a couple of months ago the blur button feature because we found that um, for a lot of automatically added images, um, it sometimes was um, difficult to see the icons because uh, for noisy images, um, it sometimes was really hard to tell whether an icon was present or not. Um, so we said, okay, by default, those um, images are blurred towards the top, uh, towards the bottom, I mean, um, but you're now able to override that setting. For example, um, in this image, I think that the bottom is blurred. We can set it to blur button no, and we can see all the detail without actually having an impact on the readability of the icons itself. So yeah, I hope, uh, I hope you're, you're liking that one. And let us move to the next feature, which is an update to the deck and milestone descriptions. Um, and you might have noticed that with the last release, we introduced that description box, both for decks as well as for, well, no, as well as for milestones. And um, as you can see right here, um, you're now able to set a cover image for both milestones and decks to give your white matters. Let's move on to the next one, which is um, an update to the UI regarding default views. Let's jump back into our deck, the code deck in our example, and our um, ordering. As you can see um, right now, there um, is our ordering and the default view um, is being shown at the bottom. Right now, there's a default view set up for uh, both milestones as the first order and the owner as the secondary order. Just as a small reminder, um, you can like set any main order with the um, left mouse button. And then if you hit um, the command or hold the command or alt button, depending on your operating system, you can then um, select like a secondary order by um, just like that. And now um, if you prefer, for example, to set your default order based on priority, you can now um, save that view like that using that button and now uh, everyone in your team who opens the code deck will automatically um, be set to that order. Should they, for whatever reason, prefer to, to see the deck uh, in another order, they can of course still do that. Um, and there's also like this small helpful um, reminder with this green dot uh, indicating that um, the default order currently is not active. Um, so if I know where to reset my default view back to the priority, um, 
yeah, you can now see that um, the icon is gone um, and I am now back at the default order. All right, I think those were the main features. I hope there was something interesting for you and should you have any feedback, feel free to let me know in the comments. All right, thank you, bye-bye.